Wright's fifth seeded cats are heading to Nashville to begin a run at a national championship. A little over 20 years ago, April 1st, 1985 to be exact, a then eighth seeded Villanova led by coach Rolly Massimino and three seniors began their run at a title in Dayton, Ohio. What transpired was unforgettable. In part one of A Cat's Tale, Ron Burke looks back at an upset of epic proportion. Now the foundation for that title run was built. They played the near perfect the game. Near perfect game. Perfect NCAA game. basketball 1985 was uh, is what I am what known I for. Am for. McLean with a spinning move is tied it at 20. He turned around, coming back up court and spit on the floor like take that, fellas. That's exactly what I was doing, making a statement, letting everybody know. You know, we didn't come here to fear Georgetown. We came here to make a match. We came here to make a match. It was April Fool's Day 1985, but this was no joke. David had indeed felled the lion. The Villanova Wildcats, an eight seed and a nine and a half point underdog, beat the reigning NCAA champion and top ranked Georgetown Hoyas in perhaps sports greatest upset. This storybook ending began years before that legendary night in Lexington, Kentucky. And along the way, it had more than its share of twists and turns. Seniors Ed Pinckney, Dwayne McLean, and Gary McLean came to the main line in 1981 as freshmen. And along with Coach Rolly Massimino, they began a four-year stretch of winning that was unprecedented in school history. That was a relationship that started when we were 15, 16 years old at basketball camp. You know, and Gary signed with Villanova. He recruited me to sign at Villanova. We both recruited Ed to sign at Villanova. You know, taking care of three very important positions, a big man, a swing man, and a point guard. These kids came in together. There was a special bond between them from the time that they arrived, and frankly, they wanted to do something special. The trio led Villanova to six NCAA tournament wins in their first three seasons, but they had yet to reach college basketball's holy grail, the Final Four. The one constant during the Cats' 1984-85 season was inconsistency. They finished the regular season only 19-10, and and a nationally televised 23-point trouncing at the hands of Pitt was a low light. Rolly just said, get them out of there. Pitt had gave us a thrash in the national TV, our last regular season game, where Coach Matt's pulled his start and five out with two minutes, you know, gone in the second half. So his lesson was, if you don't play hard all the time, you're not going to get the job done. It left Nova's tournament hopes hanging in the balance. At that point, we were still on the fence, and that's not a good place to be. So you had guys that had uh, worked hard for four years that wanted to make some noise in the tournament that year, and now we're sitting on the fence wondering if we're going to get in or not. And uh, it was pretty euphoric when we found out that we had gotten in, and obviously then you take one game at a time. The Wildcats were given an eight seed and a first-round matchup at number nine Dayton, which for Villanova meant leaving the friendly confines of this place, its field house, for the unfriendly confines of the Flyers' home court and what would prove to be perhaps their toughest test on the road to the Final Four. Coming up on part two of A Cat's Tale, a look back at Villanova's 1985 NCAA championship. We'll take you through the Wildcats' difficult dance card en route to Lexington, Kentucky and a date with destiny.